Welcome to Hart County Public Library Outreach Virtual Storytime. We are so glad that you could join us. The Poppy Lady, Moena Bell Michael and her tribute to veterans, written by Barbara Elizabeth Walsh, paintings by Lane Johnson. When America entered into the Great War, Moena, a school teacher from Georgia, knew she had to act with all her might. Friends and students were now caught up in the fight. She felt they deserved a symbol. People needed to be reminded of the sacrifice and courage of America's soldiers. She devoted the rest of her life to making sure the symbol would last forever. March 1917. German U-boats had sunk another American ship, and the nation was outraged. Would the president call for war? Would Congress agree? Moena Bell Michael prayed not. She had been touring Europe when war first broke out in the summer of 1914. But now, bomb craters, trenches, barbed war barriers, and battlefields cover the beautiful countryside. Visions that still made her shudder. April 1917. The paper boy wheeled his bicycle across the University of Georgia's normal school, slamming on his brakes when he reached Moena. Moena snatched the Athens banner away from him, struck by the thundering headline, Wilson asking for war. Moena slowly climbed to the top of the dormitory steps and held out the newspaper for all to see. It was striking how different personalities reacted to the sight of that headline. As war began hammering against the home door of every American, Moena knew what war would mean to the college girls. She was their teacher and foster mother. Their brothers, their sweethearts were of war service age. Some of their fathers were. Moena promised she would let them know as soon as the President and Congress reached a decision. All night, Moena called the Athens banner each time she was told to be patient. The President was still talking to Congress. At 10.30 p.m., she called again. Tell the young ladies to say their prayers, to go to bed, and to sleep. The frustrated editor replied, when news broke, an extra edition would be delivered to campus and into Moena's hands. Sleep was out of the question. On campus, Moena looked to the stars and moon, bright on this clear springtime night, and breathed the scent of white cape jasmine blossoms. She thought of the boys at the university. She offered all to God, if only he would spare them. She thought of boys throughout the country. If only she could go in their place. Before dawn, the edition finally arrived. Moena read Wilson's inspiring plea to defend democracy, defend the rights of small nations, defend the freedom of the seas. America was going to war. Moena vowed to do everything she could for the soldiers to remember them. Moena knitted socks and sweaters, rolled bandages for the Red Cross, and when enlisted friends and students came to say goodbye, she gave them a little remembrance to take overseas. But Moena wanted to do more. She delivered books, magazines, and candy to their camps nearby. She and friends invited soldiers home for dinner and I felt privileged to give my best welcome to these lads in my country's uniform. And when it was time for them to leave, Moena went to the train station to see them off, and my heart was thrilled with pride for their bravery, courage, and cheerfulness. They were so young. They were so innocent of the dangers they were to face but Moena needed to do even more. 
To become a canteen worker for the YMCA and help soldiers overseas seemed perfect. She could listen about home and family and serve food to men on leave from the battlefronts. In the fall of 1918, her appointment approved, 49-year-old Moena headed for New York City and the training program at the Y headquarters at Columbia University. She successfully completed the course, but was told she was too old to go overseas. Moena refused to give up, but what could she do now? Help the soldiers before they left for war. Moena set up a desk in the basement of Columbia's Hamilton Hall, where soldiers, sailors, Marines, and secretaries came during their free time. Every day brought privileges to serve men and women going overseas, each to face the submarine-infested Atlantic and the gas, bombs, and shrapnel of the battlefronts. But as winter approached, the large room turned gray and gloomy. The soldiers deserved a brighter, more comfortable place. Moena knew what to do. With her small salary, Moena bought fresh flowers and placed them throughout the room. More soldiers came to read and write. Others came to spend time with family, friends, and sweethearts. So often they would hang about near the desk, waiting for a bit of attention. And Moena was happy to look at photographs, listen to letters, and share the latest hometown news. But she needed to do even more. One Saturday morning, a soldier left a magazine at her desk. Moena turned to a marked page to find We Shall Not Sleep by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a Canadian physician. She had read the poem many times, but she read it again. Touched by McRae's tribute to the soldiers he could not save on the battlefields of Flanders. The poem was most strikingly illustrated in color. Spirits of soldiers floated above a battleground covered in white crosses and bright red poppies. There were no names on the crosses, no memory of who rested beneath the red poppies. And Moena knew what she had to do. She read the last verse slowly. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. To Moena, it seemed as though the silent voices again were vocal, whispering. She thought of friends and students and the soldiers at the Y, and knew she could never forget them. Moena turned over an envelope and wrote a pledge, ending with a promise. And now the torch and poppy red we wear in honor of our dead. Fear not that ye have died for naught. We'll teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders' fields. When she finished, Moena looked up at three war workers standing by her desk. On behalf of everyone, they had come to repay her for her kindness. She shared both poems with the men. Impressed, they shared them with others. Soon, Moena was surrounded by men wanting poppies of their own to honor their buddies, sleeping now among the poppies of Flanders' fields. Moena knew just what to do. With their $10 check, she announced, I shall buy red poppies. I shall always wear red poppies. Poppies of Flanders Fields. Moena went poppy hunting on the streets of New York. It never occurred to me the difficulty I would have in finding artificial poppies of Flanders Fields in the novelty shops of New York City. At last, in Wanamaker's department store, she found one large and 24 small red silk poppies. Moena pinned one on her cloak collar and hurried back to the Y. It was evening and the room was quiet. 
Moena placed the large red poppy in the vase on her desk and handed out 23 smaller ones to the men and women leaving soon for France. She watched as they pinned them on their uniforms. Still, Moena needed to do even more. She would not stop until every American wore a poppy to remember the soldiers. Always.